Ragamuffin's history is filled with strange alien rumors and alleged secret government experiments. And let's not forget about its controversial founder, Anne Baker. Remember this name, as it's crucial to understand their origin. Their history is intertwined with the history of ragdolls, as these cats are closely related. There is a bit of tea between ragdoll and ragamuffin supporters, which I'll address in a dedicated video. But let's start with the beginning. Ragdolls and ragamuffins descend from a white, long-haired cat named Josephine. According to Ann Baker, Josephine was an outdoor cat and had unremarkable kittens. But then, a movie-like scenario happened. Josephine had an accident and miraculously survived. She was allegedly treated in a secret government facility and genetically altered to produce gorgeous kittens, which she afterward proceeded on having. Josephine's kittens were on the bigger side, beautiful and docile. Ann Baker didn't own Josephine, so she bought Josephine kittens to create a new breed, the ragdoll. She made some crazy allegations, like the one I just told you. Additionally, Anne Baker stated ragdolls don't feel pain, a totally wrong and dangerous thing to spread. At one point, she allegedly claimed ragdolls had human genetic material. Whether she actually believed these or not, one thing's for sure, people became interested in these new and seemingly strange cats. The breed's name was perfectly chosen. Ragdolls are known for going limp in your arm thus their name. Sadly, Ann Baker didn't make things easy on the breeders who wanted to grow ragdolls. She trademarked the name, creating her own cat association. She carefully monitored the breeding process at every cattery, choosing each cat's mating partner. Also, Ann Baker's association required a yearly fee and a commission every time a kitten was sold. These rules, fees, and rumors were too much for some breeders, who decided to take off. They proceeded on registering their cats as ragdolls with other associations risking lawsuits as a consequence. This was also possible because Ann Baker gave a ragdoll breeding pair to a family of breeders before founding her association. Luckily, the breeders who left managed to get the ragdoll recognized by some associations. Finally, the breeders who stayed decided they'd had enough. After Ann continued to spread weird rumors and allegations, they left as well, taking their cats with them. But there was one problem. The ragdoll name was taken. Also, these breeders had cats displaying all kinds of colors and patterns, not just color point. So they required a new name. And this is how the ragamuffin breed was born. Fun fact, the ragamuffin was initially going to be named Liebling as a tribute to their sweet temperaments. I have to admit, both ragdoll and ragamuffin names are amazing. And I can't tell which one I love more, can you? Let's quickly discuss their appearance before talking about their fascinating personalities. Ragamuffins are big, muscular fellows, weighing from 10 to 20 pounds. Their body is rectangular, broad-chested with broad shoulders. Ragamuffins are meaty cats, meaning they should feel well covered with flesh. Yep, this is from Ragamuffins breed standard. Their paws are large, round, and decorated with tufts. Ragamuffins are gifted with medium to long, silky coats, but the texture can vary depending on color. The fur is longer near the neck, giving the appearance of a ruff. These cats sport a long, bushy tail, similar in look to a bottle brush, but the highlight of a ragamuffin lies in its eye shape. Ragamuffins' eyes are are large, walnut-shaped, and expressive, giving them a sweet look. This look is what makes people fall in love with ragamuffins at first sight. Their eyes can be of any color, even odd-eyed. What about their coat coloration? In theory, ragamuffins come in all colors and patterns, but some cat associations, like CFA, don't allow pointed ragamuffins to participate in shows. Also, this well-known cat association doesn't recognize ragamuffins as a breed, so avoid it when searching for breeders. Fun fact, ragamuffin kittens can be born in various colors, but the pointed ones are born completely white. Even if long, their coats are said to be non-matting. However, this isn't always the case. I'll talk about their grooming needs a bit later. Being big cats, ragamuffins take about four years to fully grow, a pretty long time for a cat. So what are their personalities like? Ragamuffins are ultimate muffins, as their very name implies. Their name comes from their adorable trait of going limp when someone picks them up. Ragdoll was already taken, so ragamuffin was the next best thing. However, this trait isn't shared by all ragamuffins. Most either like being held or tolerate it, but some dislike it. So don't worry if your ragamuffin isn't into hugs, and be understanding if this is the case. Either way, ragamuffins are super docile, friendly, and non-demanding cats. They're also in my top 10 most laid-back cat breeds video. Ragamuffins happily get along with everyone and are incredibly tolerant of kids and toddlers. They do great with dogs as well. Ragamuffins are 
are said to enjoy a laugh. But I don't think it's true for all of them, since they're so fluffy. But they for sure love to receive affection. They're known, just like ragdolls, for being floppy cats. They also use this sweet behavior to get your attention, so make sure to give it to them. Ragamuffins are laid back when it comes to strangers, too. They usually don't shy away from people or from being picked up. Also, they're not easily scared or stressed. Unfortunately, this comes with a drawback. Being so trusting, these cats have a hard time spotting dangers and can quickly be snatched away. So make sure to keep them indoors. They're also intelligent cats, even if they may not seem it at first. Ragamuffins can jump pretty high if they sense food and can learn to open drawers and cupboards. However, they tend to listen when you tell them no. Ragamuffins are smart enough to learn tricks, but they might be too lazy to care. This brings me to the next one. Since ragamuffins have a medium to low energy level, you might have to convince them to exercise. In general, they tend to have short bursts of energy every now and then, but won't do much running. You'll have to make sure the lovable and foodie ragamuffin stays fit. Luckily, they're big cats, so they can eat more than a regular cat without putting on too much weight. Plus, a moderate fatty pad on their stomachs is acceptable. But there's a bright side to their lower activity needs. They can be kept indoors without missing out on anything. Sure, a catio is every cat's dream come true. But in the case of ragamuffins, it's not a must. Here's something that might make or break the deal for you. Their grooming needs. Ragamuffins have non-matting fur, but this doesn't apply to every cat of this breed. Some individuals have fine hair, which unfortunately can be prone to matting. Any cat's mats must be removed, as they can cause some nasty issues. So I would say hope for the best, but be prepared for the worst. Also, the matting usually occurs after the cat has grown its full fur. There are two more topics to discuss before learning their price, health and lifespan. I believe your kitty's health should be more important than anything else, and I never advise getting a cat only for its looks. Luckily, ragamuffins are healthy and hardy cats. They're not susceptible to any health issues, but HCM might still be a concern, as ragdolls are prone to it. If you're really interested in these cats, go ahead and discuss this topic with a veterinarian or a breeder before getting one. I couldn't find a great source regarding their life expectancy. Still, considering they're not known for being prone to any significant health condition, I would say it's 15 years on average. How much will you pay for a ragamuffin kitten? Ragamuffins are pedigreed cats, so it's no surprise you have to pay an amount that covers the breeder's expenses. Usually, a pet quality ragamuffin costs about $2,300. Keep in mind that each cattery is different, and the prices can vary depending on the individual. By the way, these are the best cat associations to look for ragamuffin breeders in the U.S. As always, make sure to get your kitten from a respectable breeder. Avoid backyard breeders or breeders that don't allow visits. In this way, you'll have the best shot of buying a healthy, long-living cat. Don't forget, a kitten should be at least 12 weeks old when given for adoption. And if you can't afford a ragamuffin, or even if you can, consider adopting. Stray cats are typically healthier than a lot of pedigree cats, having a larger genetic pool. Not to mention, you'll be saving a cat's life and quite a lot of money. Let's do a quick recap. Ragamuffins are sweet cats, perfect for people wanting a chill companion. They can be left alone during the day, and you don't need to make much effort to entertain them. Also, they're great for families with kids and other pets. Just keep in mind their grooming needs. If you want a ragamuffin kitten, check out Imperial Ragamuffins Cattery and also their YouTube channel. And if you want to be sure the ragamuffin is the perfect cat for you, watch my most laid-back cat breeds in the world video. See you there!